Today we're going to start uh, the last chapter for this class, and, and uh, this is uh, from another edition. And um, this is going to be chapter 19, even though this is really not chapter 19, but we're going to call it chapter 19, and it's going to be on Markov chains. Markov chains is a particular type of process uh, that we call a stochastic process. Um, a stochastic process is one where the next, um, what we call the state of an experiment, is only dependent on the present state. Okay. Um, so what we look at is when we look at a stochastic process, they are models, they're mathematical models that evolve over time uh, in a probabilistic, probabilistic manner. Okay. So what that means is that if we have a current state and the probability of transitioning from one state to another state uh, is given, then we can say, hey, what's the process? What's the probability that we will uh, transition? For example, if we look at um, classes, right? So if we look at um, if we know the probability that a child of an upper class parent becomes middle class or lo lower class. Okay, so that would be a transition, right? And we all know the similar information for a child of a middle class or lower class parent. And so how are the, they going to move up and down in, in social status? Okay, when we talk about classes. So what is the probability? So here's the question. What is the probability that the grandchild or great-grandchild of an upper class parent or is middle or lower class? So that is where we would look at a stochastic process. That is an example of a stochastic process. Okay. And so if we know the, pre the probability of the tr transition uh, at the present state, going from the present state to the next state, then we can figure out that probability using Markov chains. Okay, so in sociology, it is convenient to classify people by income as lower class, middle class, and upper class. So sociologists have found that the strongest determinant um, of the income class of an individual is the income class of the individual's parents. For example, if an individual is in a lower class, a lower income class is said to be in state uh, one. An individual that is in middle cl income class is state two, and in an, an individual in an upper middle income class is in state three. Then the following probabilities of change in income class from one generation to the next would apply. So we would have something that looks like this. Okay, and so in this case here, here's the current generation. So current generation, you're at one, two, or three. Okay, so the probability of going from state one to state one, like going from next gener current generation to the next generation, is 0.65. So the probability that if you are in uh, upper class, uh, upper class income, then the probability that your children will be in upper class is going to be 0.65 okay so or grand uh, your child okay um, and likewise if you are in here so oh uh, here if you are in state one and the probability of going to state two is 0.28 and going to state one is uh, 0 0.07 okay so notice notice that uh, or if I'm in state two let's say middle class uh, the probability of going from middle class to upper class for my grand uh, my children would be from the next for the next generation would be what uh, 0.15. Okay, so to go from middle class to upper class, or to go from middle class to middle class is the highest. So notice that these are the highest numbers along this diagonal. Okay, because the strongest deter determinant uh, by so sociology is is the parents. That, that's not always the case, for example, you know. Um, so this would be the probability matrix, if you will, of transitioning from one class to another class for
from the current generation to the next generation. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Um, how would we read this? Okay. So we're going to use the symbol PIJ, where I is the I throw. So that's the initial state. That's the transition from state and the two state J. So if I say, okay, PIJ is the probability of going from state I to state J, where I is the row, your current state. So if I'm here, this is PIJ, this is P11, the probability of going from state one to state one, from one generation to the next is 0.65. This would be P what? P32, right? The probability of going from state three to state two, okay? And let's see here. Um, let's see what else I can say about this. Okay, so the information in the table can be written in other forms. And so what we call uh, a transition diagram, okay? So when we have a transition diagram, this is the way we would write it, okay? So if we take the information of the table, we say, okay, um, what we do is, okay, each arrow represents a transition. So the probability of going from state three and then staying in state three is 0.52. The probability of going from state three to state one in one generation is 0.12. So that's denoted by this arrow. Okay, and so we can take the information from this table here, all of these nine probabilities, and we can represent it as a transition diagram. Um, and that's our, yeah, this is what we call a transition diagram. Okay, so we can take the information from this table, we can write it in it as a transition diagram, or we can write it as a transition matrix. Okay which is basically taking the table and just writing the numbers down uh, in a matrix, knowing that the row values are the current state and the column values are the, uh, the next state or the transition state. Okay, so uh, do we have this? No, we don't. Um, so if we go back and we just write it as a matrix, um, one of the things that we can see from the matrix, if we just picture these numbers as a matrix, is that it is square since all possible states must be used in both the rows and the columns. So it's a square matrix, right? Same, the rows and columns are all the same. All the entries are between 0 and 1, inclusive, right? So they're probabilities. So we know we can't have negative, right? And so it's numbers from 0 to 1. Uh, they could be zero or they could be one uh, because all the entries are again representing pro uh, probabilities. The sum of the entries in any row must be one. Notice that, okay? Because it's the probability going from this state to either state one, state two, or state three. And so you must go into one of those three states because everybody is categorized by income into those three states. So it makes sense that the probabilities should add up to one going across the rows, or going uh, going acro uh, across the columns in one row. Um, let's see here. Yeah, I guess that's all I want to say here. So let's go to the Markov chain. So a sequence of trials of an experiment is a Markov chain if one. The outcome of each experiment is one of a set of discrete states. Okay, so a countable discrete number of states. Okay, a finite number of discrete states. Okay, so the outcome of each experiment is one of a set of discrete states. Two, the outcome of an experiment depends only on the present state and not on any past states at all. Okay, for example, in this example here, um, the next generation, uh, the income of the next generation, the income status uh, state, middle class, the class of the next generation is only dependent on the class of the parents. The class of the grandparents does not matter. Okay, um, three, 
the transition probabilities remain constant from one transition to the next transition. Okay, so the transition probabilities remain constant, so they don't change. Okay, so now, for example, in the matrix P, which we'll call these P matrices, so in the matrix P, uh, with constant probabilities, a person is assumed to be in one of the three discrete states, either lower, middle, or upper income, with each offspring in one of these three discrete states. Okay, so they're constant. Okay, so let's look at uh, dry cleaning here. Okay, so we have uh, dry cleaners. So we have a small town has only two dry cleaners, Johnson and North Clean. Johnson's manager hopes to increase the firm's market share by conducting an extensive advertising campaign. After the campaign, a market research firm finds that there is a probability of 0.8 that a customer at, of Johnson's will uh, bring his next batch of dirty clothes to Johnson's and a 0.35 chance that, that a North Clean customer will switch to Johnson for his next batch. Write the transition matrix showing this information. Okay, so what does this mean? So let's draw the transition. Um, here's the transition diagram. Okay, so it says the probability uh, from the researcher says the probability of 0.8 that a customer of Johnson's will bring his next batch of dirty clothes back to Johnson's. Okay, so here 0.8, right? So 0.8 means that the, the person's going to bring their their dry cleaning back. That means that there's a 0.2 chance that they're going to take their clothes to North Clean. Now, it also says that there's a 0.35 chance that somebody at North Clean will switch to Johnson's for their next batch. Okay, so that's going to be from 0.35. So that's represented by this arrow, which means then the probability that somebody from North Clean is going to stay at North Clean for their next batch of clothing is the complement, so 0.65. And so we've got our complete diagram. So how would we write the matrix? Okay. Um, oops, hold on. So the matrix would be, uh, would look like this. Okay, so let's fill out our matrix. Okay, so let's say state one and state two. And we'll call this, oops. Call this state one, state two. Okay, now, so state one, let's say this is uh, for Johnson, stays at Johnson's. Okay, so this is a customer that stays at Johnson's. Okay, and that's going to be 0 0.8. Okay, they start at Johnson's and they come back to Johnson's. What if they go to North Clean? Well, that's going to be a point uh, two. Okay, now what if they're at North Clean and they move to Johnson's? Well, that's going to be a point three five. And the chance that they're going to stay at North Clean is going to be 0.65. And so there's our transition matrix, where this is where uh, state one is they're at Johnson's, state two is they're at North Clean. Okay, so this is the current state, and then this is the uh, the transition state. 
okay and these are the probabilities so this would be your p matrix so this is what we would call the p matrix okay okay so let's see what else we have here um, let's see here okay now this matrix shows the probability uh, of changing so if we go to the income class changes if we look at the probability here so for the income classes right this is what we get uh, this would be our p matrix for the income class so we'd have one two three one two three and so we would have 0 0.65, 0 0.28, and 0 0.07. And then the next row would be 156718. So one five six seven one eight. We have point point point, and the last row is twelve thirty six fifty two. Okay, so this is the P matrix. Okay, so this matrix shows that the probability of change in income class from one generation to the next. Now, let's investigate the probabilities for the next, uh, for, the, for the changes in income class over two generations, assuming that the transition probabilities remain the same. Okay, for example, if a parent is in state three, right, upper class, what is the probability that the grandchild will be in state two? Okay, now we're not talking about the child, but we're talking about the next generation, so two generations from now. So to find out, we start with a tree diagram as shown on the next screen, or in the next uh, slide. Now this diagram shows only the part of the tree that starts in state three, okay, because that's where we're starting, okay? So if we look at this, okay, we're in state three, right here. Okay, so we start in state three. Okay. And then we go through the different transitions. Okay, so in state three, so the first, the next generation, which is the child, has these probabilities from the matrix, right? So again, from this matrix, we know that in state three, here are the probabilities of moving to the next state, state one, state two, and state three. So that's where these probabilities come from here. Okay. Now, once you're in state one, right now you go back to the matrix, and we know that the, the probability of transitioning the next generation, again, is going to be these probabilities here. Okay. Okay, so now... We have these probabilities here, and then to go from state uh, three to state two, or from state two to state one, two or three are these probabilities here, and to go from state three to state one, two or three are going to be these probabilities here. And notice that these probabilities are the same as these probabilities. Okay, so now this is the grandchild. So now here's the grandchild. Now, so here's the probability of the grandchild being in state one, given That the grandparent is in three and the parent is in one and so on and so forth right so you we can see that all of these probabilities that we're getting 
are for every combination of the two generations, right? So now, what? but what's the question? What's the probability? What we're asking for is what's the probability that a parent who's in state three will have a grandchild uh, who is in state two? Well, then we only want the ones that have state two. Okay, so we, oops, so we want this one, right? And we want this one, and we want this one. So we want to go down the branches here. So the probability of the grandchild having a state being in state two is either this one, so this is a possibility, or this one, or this one. So we go, we multiply down the branches and add across the branches. So it's going to be 0 0.12 times 0 0.28, which equals this. And then 0 0.36, 0 0.67, which equals this. And then we got 0 0.52 times 0 0.136 gives us this. And so we add up these probabilities here, and so the probability turns out to be what? Well, you add them up and you get about 0.46. So 0.462 is what you get, 0 0.4620. And so all we're doing is using what we know about probabilities, right? And so that is the probability of a grandchild being in class two when their grandparent is in step three or class three. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Okay, so let's look at this one here. So here's the information. So again, this is very uh, similar to the one we were just doing. It says a small town has only two dry cleaners. Johnson is in North Clean. Johnson's manager hopes to increase the firm's market share by conducting extensive advertising. After the campaign, the market research firm finds that there is a probability of 0.68 that the customer of Johnson's will bring its next batch of dirty clothes to Johnson's and a 0.21 chance that a North Clean customer will switch over to Johnson's for its next batch. So we write the matrix, the, the transition matrix. So now, remember, we have the current state and we wanna know, hey, what's the probabilities of either staying in the current state or transitioning to a different state? So we assume that the probability that a customer comes to a given dry cleaner depends only on where the last batch of clothes was taken. Okay, so that's one of the assumptions. Okay, the probability that a Johnson's customer will return is 0.68. So the probability is 0.32 that he the customer will switches to North Clean. And similarly, there is a 0.79 chance that North Clean customer will return. So the probability is uh, 0.21 that they switch to Johnson. Okay, and so when we set up our matrix, we set up a table, right? So here's the second batch. So here's the first batch, the current batch, right? The first batch or where they took their last batch. And this is where they're going to take their next batch. Okay, and so we've got Johnson and North Clean and we've got Johnson and North Clean. And so our matrix is going to look like this. Okay, so again, we could put one and two and one and two uh, over here as long as we're we know what the states mean. Okay, so the current state one is you stay at Johnson's. Um, current state two is that your that they took their uh, clothes to North Clean. Okay, so these are the current states and these are the transition states. Okay.
Okay, so now what? Let's see here. Um, let's see here. Okay, so let's do transition matrix P for income class changes. So here's the matrix. Okay, and so this is what we call the P matrix. Okay, so again, this should be pretty straightforward by now as far as just what we've been talking about. This matrix shows the probability of change in income class from one generation to the next. Find the probability that a lower class person will have an upper class grandchild or great grandchild. Okay, find the probability that a lower class person will have an upper class great grandchild. So that means we're going to go to um, the, the two generations, right? So we're going to the next generation with his child. Then we're going to the second generation, which is grandchild. Then we're going to the third generation. Okay, so we're going to do this three steps. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, to find the grandchild, we're going to have to do P2. Okay, well, what does that mean? And then the great grandchild is P cubed, right? So P squared and P cubed. Okay, so now we got to really, well, what's going on here? How do we do that? Well, this is sort of like the tree diagram, but this is where we're going to use matrices to get the same answers. Okay, and with the matrix multiplication, uh, instead of doing one branch, for one instance, because if I ask several different questions, you'd most likely have to do a separate tree diagram for a lot of those. Okay, um, like in the other one, we only wrote the transition from three. But if I ask for, hey, what's the probability that a grandchild goes as a parent that's in middle class and goes from middle class to upper class or middle class to lower class? Well, I'd have to do another. Uh, tree diagram, a separate tree diagram for that, okay, where if we use these matrix um, multiplication that you're going to see, um, we can get all of the transitions in one matrix and answer any questions at that point, okay. So we're going to start with the P matrix, okay, and that's what we're going to do, and then what we're going to do is we're going to multiply P by itself and every time we multiply P by itself, that's the same as going to the next generation. Okay, so this is the transition matrix for going from parent to child, right? So this would be the transition matrix going from parent to grandchild. So that means, hey, the probability that a parent who is in uh, income class number one in the upper income class having a grandchild that's in the upper income class is 0.47 now, okay? So this is a transition matrix that goes out two steps, okay? So this is for the grandchild. And then if we do it again, and we do matrix, we take the original matrix and we multiply by the matrix again, now this gives us the probability that a lower income class <coughs> uh, person, Right, so here it says, or excuse me, upper income class says find the probability that the grandchild of an upper class parent is middle class, also find the probability that the grandchild is lower class. Okay, so in this case here. They were asking what? Oops. Find the probability that the lower class, lower class person will have an upper class great grandchild. Okay, so this is class one, this is lower class. What's the probability that lower class person will have an upper class child, great grandchild that's going to be 0 0.1730 
So again, this matrix P3, P cubed, represents the probability matrix, the transition matrix of someone going from um, upper uh, the current class, a parent going from current class, and then their great grandchild going to any of the other classes. So the great grandchild has a probability of 0.3825 of staying also in lower income, 0.4446 of transitioning into the next income, uh, higher income and middle middle class, or this probability of going to upper middle uh, upper class. Okay, and then you've got the, all the other probabilities too that you could also use. Okay. So again, the matrix P cubed gives the probability of 0.1730 that a person in state one will have a great grandchild who ends up in state three. Now, in the um, calculator, you can also do this in the calculator by using the functions under the matrix. So you could take A cubed. So again, you take the matrix, right? And you're looking at rounding, and so you're rounding to four decimal places again. So these decimals can get pretty pretty long. So what you want to do is you're basically taking the matrix and you're cubing it. So very simple. You just you cube the matrix. You enter the A matrix, which is your P matrix, and then you cube it. And then what you do is you use the rounding function to round all the values in the matrix to four decimal places. Okay, and so that way it keeps everything uh, simple. Okay, so now it says, using the transition matrix for the dry cleaners, find the probability that a person bringing his first batch to Johnson's will bring his fifth batch to North Clean. Okay, so we have a cleaner. It says the tra So we want to use the transition matrix for the dry cleaners. Find the probability that a person bringing his first batch to Johnson will bring his fifth batch to North Clean. So how do we do that? Well, we start with the transition matrix P. We start with the P matrix, right? And so what are we looking for? Well, we have a person who's brought their first batch, right? They brought their first batch to Johnson. And so what's the probability of bringing their next batch to North Clean? Well, their next batch to North Clean is going to be this, right? This is the probability of going from, uh, or excuse me, this is the probability of going from Johnson North Clean, right there, okay, for the next one. Well, what about the, the, the one after that? Well, then that would be P2, we'd have to, or P squared, okay? So that would be their, um, their next batch. So that their second time back, right? So the way I understand it, so that they bring their first batch to Johnson, right? So that's the first one. And then they're going to bring their next batch, so their second batch is going to be 0.2. The third batch is going to be um, cubed. And then the fourth batch is going to be quadrupled, right? Right? So that's, uh, hold on. So this is going to be the first batch to the second batch. And then P2 is going to be the third batch. P3 is going to be the fourth batch. And then P to the fourth is going to be their fifth batch, the way I understand this. Okay, so it says to find the probabilities of their first batch, the fourth stage of this Markov chain. Find the fourth power of the transition matrix. So I was correct. Okay, so the way to understand this is they brought their first batch to Johnson. So that's where we're starting, right? So to bring their next batch, which would be their second batch, would be this matrix here, the P matrix. So this tells us 0.2. So to bring the third batch, we would have to calculate P2. Okay. To bring the third batch, or to, uh, yeah. To bring their fourth batch, it would be P3. And then finally, to bring their fifth batch, 
would be p4. Okay, so now you're going to have to make sure you know how to do these by hand and with the matrix or with the calculator rather. So what would you do? You would just multiply this matrix by itself one time to get p2 and then multiply that matrix by p to get p3 and then multiply p3 by p to get p4. Okay, or you can put in your calculator and just do the matrix and just do the matrix multiplication and, and use p to the fourth. Okay, so now if C represents the transition matrix, then C is this. So I would we I always use P. Okay, so there you see that's fine. So the P matrix is going to be the original matrix, then P2 is going to be that. And then P3 and P4, and then, then you just look at the states. So the probability of going from the current state, which is 1, going to that their fifth batch goes to Johnson is going to be 0.34. Okay, and that's it. So row 1, column 2, gives the number 0.3487, the probability that a person bringing his first batch to Johnson will bring his fifth batch to North Point. Okay, so now the initial distribution. Okay, so let's talk about this. Uh, let me see here. Um, so now, suppose that the table gives the initial distribution of people in the three income classes. Okay, so this gives us, what does it mean? It means this gives us the proportion of people in the population that go into each one of these current states. So this gives us, hey, the 21% of the people are in this state, 68% of the people are in this state, and 11% of the people are in upper class. Okay, now to see how these proportions would change, after one generation, use the tree diagram, okay? So we're going to use the tree diagram, and we're going to find the proportion of people in state two after one generation. And then we're going to add the numbers indicated with the arrows, okay? So we're going to use the tree diagram to set this up, okay? So, we're, here's our initial state. Right? So here's the initial proportions. 0 0.11, 0 0.68, and 0 0.1. So this is after this first. So this is the states. And then what we do is we basically use our transition matrix. So going from state one, so here's the probabilities of going from state one to state one, two, three, and then from state two to state one, two, three, and so on and so forth. Okay? And so what we do is if we want to find out what the proportion of the next generation, what proportion of the next generation um, is going to be in state two, well, then all we're going to do is we're going to look at, well, these. Okay. And we're going to do the exact same thing we did before. We're going to multiply down each one of those branches that end at the result that we're looking for, and we're going to add these probabilities together. Okay, and so when we add these probabilities together, uh, well, that's going to give us the um, the um, the proportions. Okay, so the initial distributions of the states, 21%, 68%, and 11%, uh, becomes after one generation, what? What does it become? Well, what do we get when we add these? Okay, what do we get? Here we get what? So we get point, oh, what is it, point, um, 
No, it's going to be more than 0.55. Um, let's see here. Yeah, so we get 0 0.5540. Okay, so if these are going to give us 0 0.5540. Okay, and then if we do the same thing for 1, right, so we're going to add these together, all the 1s. And what do we get when we add those together? We get what? 0.25. And then when we add the others together, the threes, we get 0.19. And so we can get another proportion. So hey, if we want to know, hey, what's the proportion, what proportion of people in the next generation are going to be um, in these um classes. So in other words, hey, we could look this investigate how the population is going to change over time. Okay? And so we can use these transition matrices to answer those types of problems or questions. So it says find the distribution of income classes after 3 generations. Okay, so how do we do this? Well, all we need to do is we need to find the transition matrix the P matrix that that illustrates the probabilities of going from generation one to going three the next uh, three generations, and then we're going to take that matrix and we're going to multiply it by the initial proportion matrix. Okay, so let's look at how they do it. it says to find the distribution of income class after three generations, multiplying the initial probability vector, okay, and the cube of P, exactly what I said. Okay, so we, we're going to find P cubed, and then we're going to multiply the initial distribution matrix, right, the initial probability uh, vector, by that P cubed. So here's P. So we're going to use our calculator. Again, make sure you can do this by hand, okay, as well, using matrix multiplication. And so we're going to multiply P by P. We're going to get this matrix. Do not forget how to do matrix multiplication. And then if we do, do it again, we get this matrix. So this is the matrix. This is the transition matrix go, that goes three generations. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to take our initial vector matrix, the initial probabilities, we call that x naught or x sub 0. And so we're going to multiply this matrix, which is our initial proportions, by this matrix. Notice that this is a vector that's a row vector, right? Why is that? Because this has to be 1 by, a, uh, one by 3. Because remember, to do matrix multiplication, the, the, uh, the columns of the first matrix has to match the rows of the second matrix. And so now if we multiply these together, we're going to get another uh, row vector. And now this is the end result. So based on this, looks like the proportion of people in lower income is going to increase to almost 28%. Uh, the number of people in middle class is going to decrease to almost 50%, and the amount of people in upper class is going to increase uh, to about 22%. Okay, so uh, in the next three generations. Okay, based on, of course, based on this matrix. Okay, so now let's look at some more generalities here. So let's see here. Okay, so now in the next section, we're going to develop a long range prediction. So, what we're going to do is we're going to use Markov chains to make predictions about things. So, so, um, so the work in this section is going to be using this information here. It says, suppose a Markov chain has initial probability vector, so here's the x of 0, okay, and a transition matrix P. 
then the probability vector after n repetitions of the experiment, in other words, if we're talking about uh, generational transitions, right? So how many generations, or we're talking about, um, it could be an ex replications of an experiment. Um, so we're using the term experiment in a general sense. So then the probability that vector after n repetitions of the experiment is going to be using that that formula. Okay, so that is uh, our introduction to uh, stochastic processes and Markov chains in particular. So next time we're going to talk about regular Markov chains. Okay, so now Markov chains we haven't really talked about. Okay, all we've done is we've introduced the idea of a Markov chain. We've introduced a regular, or excuse me, a um, um, the P matrix, and we've introduced the idea of um, the how we use the transition matrix to find probabilities of outcomes after certain repetitions of an experiment. So next time we're going to talk about regular Markov chains and how they're used, and then we're also then we're going to get into absorbing uh, states and things like that, which are going to come a little bit later. But again, make sure you practice your matrix multiplication. Do the triads or your turns in this section. Do the examples yourself. There's more than just the one, ex a couple examples that I did. And make sure you're taking notes and you have your questions when you come to class because we're going to work on this stuff. So the more prepared you are, the better. The more prepared you are, the better. So make sure you watch the videos, practice the problems, uh, the exercise, the examples. Okay. If you have questions or you're not sure about something, write them down, bring them to class, and we'll work it out in class. Okay, until then, have a great day.